And welcome back. Hello. Hey, girl. Hey, we are back with another great episode. And we have an amazing guest host. We have Andrea Bernholtz back from Swimanista, the power, power entrepreneur in fashion design and manufacturing. And of course, we have our gorgeous, wonderful co-host, Devin Carbaugh. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks Yay. for having both of us today. We're wonderful. Um, but we just want to say thank you for uh, tuning into our last episode, The Big Return. And that was actually a big hit for us. We've had, um, I was texting Devin the other day, we actually had 33 downloads a day on that episode. Amazing. I mean, we're a very small production. So 33 downloads a day from something that was not being downloaded for the last three years is a big accomplishment, in my opinion. And I'll take I, it. Yes, I'll take it too. <laughs> I take it too. So thank you very much for that. And we're doing better on, on YouTube as well. Our reels on Instagram are getting a lot of hits. And so thank you guys for following us. So don't forget to follow us on Instagram, a broad podcast. And then um, uh, obviously I'm tagging Andrea and Devin. So follow them as well. And you'll be able to see what's going on in our lives post haste, post production, because we are real humans. We do have our own businesses. And uh, this is just a little, a quirky thing that I wanted to do for a little hobby, just to talk to my friends and see what's going on with them. So welcome back to a broadcast podcast. So, Andrea, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. We really appreciate it. It's been over three years. Yeah. Can you believe that? It's over three years. Um, if you guys get a chance to listen to our first season, we actually had to do our episode in two parts because there was so chock full of information. <laughs> we like to we, talk. We didn't want to have a two-hour show, so we split it up into two parts. So when you get a chance, please... Um, Look at that uh, episode. It was called F Those Fears. What's it called? F Those Fears? Tell those fears, fears to F off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell those, those fears, fears to, to F, F off. off. So if you're on a road trip and you've got a couple <laughs> hours to kill, listen. That was, <laughs> and this was the, the spark and the very beginning of Swimanista. So Andrea, she is the designer and CEO and founder of Swimanista Swimwear. And it's a luxury branded swimwear um, and accessories company that's basically uh, solving the problem of what we women have when it comes to swimwear. Explain that. Well, how does that work? Well, it came about because a bunch of my friends were complaining about how swimwear fits, and we were all saying, oh, wouldn't it be great if my swimwear didn't tie behind my neck and was comfortable or sucked me in or uh, you know, was a little tighter here, looser there, that type of thing. So it got the spark going in my head, and I started tinkering again with my scissors and staple and glue gun and started creating something that was adjustable, taking shapewear, putting it into swimwear and, you know, creating something that was comfortable, that made you feel confident and that fit right. That fit right. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing about having bathing suits is that as a woman and as a, I'm a plus size woman, you know, we are very conscious about wearing certain swimwear out in public because we want to look good. We don't want to in my opinion, I don't want to show off the bad parts, but I want to show off the good parts. Exactly. I like you know? to focus on the positive. Yeah, focus on the positive. You know, get the get the get the girls up, get the right. hips slim down, mm -hmm. get the booty down. You know, so these are things that we think about when we go swimwear shopping. I and mean, a lot of women don't like to go swimwear shopping because of that situation. I don't really know a lot of women that like to swimwear shop at all. Yeah. And we have a, a whole thing where you can try on things at home. We also have online, we have a real life person you can set up a Zoom call with. And we can talk you through like what's going to be the best color for you, what's going to really? be the best fit for you. Absolutely. So you have a real live consultant, you know, oh. in the privacy of your own home. And even after you purchase, you can say, hey, is this right? Am I tying this right? Or how do I make I it fit know. better? Absolutely. It's a really great feature because it's, it's like it's having your own, um, you know, in in home personal concierge. Yes, your own tailor. You right. Because like we have bottoms that adjust and they're, you know, smooth on the sides. Everything's designed also to wear under your clothes so you don't have big bulky things hanging out too and sucks you in in all the right spots and no, pushes she, you out in the right spots. Andrea <laughs> is a, uh, she's she knows what she's talking about because she used to be the CEO of, or the co-founder of Rock and Republic Denim. And if you guys don't know, us Gen Xers, we were all about the Rock and Republic, honey. They were the, <laughs> yeah. they were the Jordache of, the, of, its, of its time. They were the they were the, the uh, Gloria Vanderbilt. The Gloria Vanderbilt. <laughs> you know, those are the jeans to get. And I in Los no Angeles, where we live, in Beverly Hills, they have this amazing, gorgeous store on Robertson. Robertson, I forgot what the other the cross street was. And you would know what Rock and Republic was. The store was just in glitter outside, and the the music was blaring. Yeah, and it was, it was a fun. great, great. Uh, uh, it was a great company. And you were the co-founder of that. And and also, you were also the CEO of Titan Industries. 
And what was Titan Industries again? It was a footwear licensing company with the likes of um, Zendaya and um, Gwen Stefani's collaboration, uh, collection of shoes, Badgley Mishka. It was a licensing company. And at Rockman Republic, we had all these other products, but we didn't license anything. So I took the opportunity for more of a, a learning mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a learning thing uh, to go into licensing. But I found once I actually went to work for somebody, I it reconfirmed that I'm an entrepreneur and I need to start my own jam. Absolutely. What was the inspiration that, you know, again, we talked about this three years ago, and this was, again, right before COVID hit, mm -hmm. you know, right before the, the world shut down. So this was, two, two, this was 2018. I think our show was April or March of 2019. So we didn't of 19, know. 19. Yeah, it was, 19. Nine, it was of 19. What did I say? 18. You, we started the show in 18, started in 2018, but, you heard, yeah, but our show was, was 2019. 19, yeah. yeah. And so we, you know, America, the world, all right, all right we're good. We're, you know, let's oh, go, yeah. it's, you know, before the world shut down. And um, what, so at that time, you were very excited about this new project. Devin was like definitely excited for you. And so what, if you can, tell us what the inspiration was at that time for Swimanista. Well, it was interesting. At that time, um, I was working on a really big order for Victoria's Secret. They were going to use my label, you know, in their stores and in their catalogs. And um, it worked out really good, actually, that uh, timing wise with COVID shutting down when it did, because I had uh, just put in the purchase order for all the fabric, mm. but they hadn't cut anything yet. So I didn't lose my shirt. So I was able to, to sustain. And during the process, actually, Victoria's Secret um, kind of changed their trajectory. And it was somewhere I didn't really necessarily see the brand anyway. So in that aspect, it worked out really good. But mm -hmm. um it was, I was actually working in an eco-friendly factory in China at the time. And it was a beautiful, wonderful factory, better than a factory I found here. But um, it was, you know, they shut down even before we shut down. So that caused a lot of problems. And then through this whole exercise of shutting down the world, I, you know, had to change my direction and went on. And, you know, there were two camps during COVID. There was kind of the camp of like, hey, I'm just going to sit down and eat bonbons or the other one like, hey, I'm going to use this opportunity to get fit. So all these women that are like, I lost 10 pounds. I would send them messages like, hey, you deserve a swimsuit. You know, I went super gorilla, you know, um, trying to get these. Hey, here's 20 percent off. Buy a bathing suit. You know, I was trying anything. You know? <laughs> and so that kind of took us through the ride and got us through COVID. And then coming out of COVID, um, you know, we started manufacturing in Los Angeles, which was um, oddly enough a very um, uh, I didn't really care for it. It was, mm -hmm. it was really unfortunate. The we found a, an amazing eco-friendly factory in Colombia that is much cleaner, uh, much more kind to their workers. They, it's all open air. They look out at the ocean, um, not the ocean, excuse me, the mountains and the sky all day. The facilities are amazing and immaculate and clean. Uh, the bathroom is actually nicer than mine at my own house. <laughs> the trip you and Devin took, um, and we're going to talk about. Again, how, full circle, how Devin started working for you at the same time. So we, I, people would like to know how you guys got hooked up, which is interesting. That's because of me. Yes, it, you, you were you the are. catalyst You're the to conduit. kind of put us back together. Yeah. Well, you know, thank you. Yeah. I'll take 10%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Columbia trip was amazing. Yes. And so yes. that's now you're going to, are you going back and forth once every month or how's that working? No, I think we will go back more um we absolutely loved it it's imagine in it's in medellin imagine the jungle oh, and the city so it's absolutely mm, it's amazing it was beyond my expectations mm -hmm. i was a little apprehensive and visiting a new factory but it superseded our expectations our factory as a partner it couldn't have been it couldn't be uh, more accommodating more of a team member beautiful state really? of the art yeah. and they do so much recycling and Fantastic. Um, so they're really on the same ethical path and I never thought are. that Columbia even had that type of presence for manufacturing mm -hmm. down well there. I had always heard but you know um, I, I was always apprehensive just because you know when you don't know and you hear these these the room the old Medellin, Colombia is scary. Murder capital, blah blah blah. You know, <laughs> like um, Pablo Escobar, yeah, yeah, yeah. home. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. that's what as so, Americans, yeah. that's how we still so think. So I was like, I don't know about that, but we went, and the experience was nothing but amazing. That's yeah. They, in the last thirty years, have overcompensated trying to make it better. It's like it's known for less crime. It's known for being a clean city. Wow. It's known for I can't wait art. To go. It's it's you would absolutely. You would oh, I can't it. wait. I, that's definitely on my bucket list. Yeah. I just didn't know about the altitude. 
The okay. altitude is insane. I woke up the first morning and I was like, Devin, I'm sick. I'm we like, were really? You both. had altitude sickness? Oh, but I had it really bad. Yeah, she had it bad. Is and, it higher mm-hmm. than it, when you're high. going to Denver? When that, oh, yeah. It's so weird, though. I was just a week prior. I was in actually higher than Denver in Crested Butte. Yeah. Which at the time. Wow. Right, yeah. That is high. Um, I think it was like 12 or 13 I was mm-hmm. at, 14. And so, and I felt nothing. And I get to Medellin and I'm sick. And the crazy thing, though, remember, we both felt it. The, the ride the mountains go up and then they go down and they go up yeah, and they go down. Coaster. So you're driving in the car. We drove to a lake to do a photo shoot and we're in the car and I was like, oh my God, like I've never been car sick in my life, oh, no. but it was the altitude. Then we go down and I'm like, oh, I kind of feel better. Then we go up again. As like I've never been like it's literally like a roller coaster of getting sick and better. Sick oh, and it better. was that way. I literally it was. when we got to the, our final destination, I was like, can we have a helicopter to take us home? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I'd look in the back seat and she'd be like, oh, yeah. Did you, and then going did, down, did you, like she was like, this. did you? Did you? I, you I threw, threw up throw prior up? to being oh. in the car. In, prior to being in the car. No. But I don't. I think Gatorade is poison. But I swear to God, it was my best friend on that trip. Sure I was, was like, Electrolytes. they were so nice. I'm like, I need some Gatorade. They came with like a case of cold cater, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, so well, now, now I know next time, time electrolytes, yeah. and now I know the next whole time. Yes. Yeah. What is, since you're now, you came from the denim industry to the swimsuit industry, what have been the the true big, big differences in terms of customers, clientele, marketing, and branding? Um, well, when we started Rock and Republic, it was actually, if you can even imagine this, it was before social media, which like, is unbelievable. Insane, right? Right. Talk about feeling like a dinosaur. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, how you approach your marketing, it's completely different. How and also by the time we started an online business with Rock and Republic, we were already a multi-million dollar company. So now, as you know, a lot of brands only are sold online. They only exist there. So they're completely different worlds. So that whole social media, digital, meta world is such a foreign language to me and it's constantly changing. Once I feel like I'm like, I got a grasp of it, it's gone, you know? And so that for me is really frustrating because that's not my only focus. You know, I'm trying to navigate design, overall, you know, positioning of the company, Um, staying in my lane as far as who my customer is, that that's easy. Um, But the, the two hardest things to fit have always been denim and swimwear. So I think because um, I started with a really hard one with denim going into swimwear, it's just it doesn't seem as hard because I'm doing hard. I came from hard. You yeah, know? it's a body conscious outfit, denim and bathing suits, um, swims swimwear. Because you use, you use the word also shapewear. Because it it you use are you using the shapewear definition to make the swimwear because you have to be incredibly sensitive to all types of bodies no i actually make it so it sucks you in like shapewear you okay guys. like you you put that on you're like oh my god i just look like i lost five pounds <laughs> and the thing Sign is when you wear something that's kind of holding you in you feel you feel better about yourself and you feel a little more secure you yeah. feel a little more confident Pulls your yeah. posture you know? up yeah. we only go around the girls are over the shoulder and you know i perked. also eat yeah. less when i feel like the, my stuff on you know i remember there were a couple weeks in hawaii and all i wore were my big old moos the whole time and i was right. like i'm not even gaining weight you yeah know? and then i put my real clothes on i was like oh wait a minute exactly <laughs> and then um, with jeans you know we want to feel good too and i think that's the reason why it's such an interesting huge still a multi-million dollar billion dollar yeah. industry because you know you made a really good uh, comment on the last podcast for when Andrea was here that, you know, jeans were mostly made for men because they were for working, you know, for working and the field, Texas. you know, Texas. You know, yeah, Texas, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, overalls, overalls. You know, and then the, the, the industry, the fashion industry took over the jean and denim industry to make it more fashionable mm-hmm. for men and women. Right. So um, and so but that challenge still is a is an issue today. I cannot go to a place and get good jeans that I think I, I look good in. Uh-huh. Either the cuffing is wrong, the hemming's wrong or it's too skinny. I don't like the skinny jeans. Yeah. I also don't like the full pant, full pant flow look. I'd like. I do like straight jeans. I do like the bo- the, the 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 boot cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then if you get the boot cut, then the hips look square. It's like I there's so many modules in a jean design that I'm like, oh, I don't know how you do it. You know, I actually I'm I go back to old school now because everyone always asks me, what jeans do you wear now? Yeah. And um, really, I like Levi's. You like Levi's? You're still old school Levi Strauss. And the thing is, when, when, you go, when you go to a Levi store, I do 501s and wow. all these other ones now too. 
like that um uh, like there's there's 502s and there's 50 this and, yeah. and 30 this uh, whatever mm. um i have probably five different ones in my closet but i i go to the store you know i don't want it super skinny i don't want you know same mm -hmm. thing it's like trying to trying to find the right thing yeah um it is it is a challenge yeah it is <laughs> what is the um what it, i asked you this as well what is when you wake up in the morning and you know what your your palette is your your schedule as an entrepreneur as a business person um i have challenges getting up in the morning because no one is telling me to do that i don't have a boss shannon is my boss mm. i'm the boss and she's she's a bitch you know she could be my a real boss bitch. is a bitch too isn't she horrible oh my God, yeah mine too together. yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into your, we'll talk about your boss in a minute. Trust. Um, <laughs> what is it? Because people ask me this all the time. Um, you know, Shannon, your energy and you do this and you're all around you. And I'm like, I just don't think about it. What is your, what is your motivation? How do you do it, Andrea? Uh, some days I don't, you, you know, don't? and some days are better than others. Some days I can't wait to get in mm. and get going with what I, what we've got happening. And other days it's like, ugh. You know, but Same even here. whatever you expect to walk into, it always shifts. You know, you a lot of this much time and then something happens and you're sidetracked over here or sidetracked over there. I tried to I get up quite early in the morning. Unfortunately, I always think I'm going to sleep in. I never do. So I try to like vet all my emails and get some of that happening before I go into the office. Right. Um, I used to have a home office that I like to work into, which I really liked because it enabled me to still have that uh, my daughter's homeschooled as well. And so it, it allowed me to just like share energy with her, you know. Um, so I, I do miss that a bit. But um, my office now is eight minutes from my house, Fantastic. which is fabulous. And my daughter pops by awesome. constantly. She's been our... Um, food delivery girl. Yes, yeah, yes. she's been our personal yes. Uber Eats. Starbucks, yes, Uber Eats. Eats. Yeah. Cece, shout out to Cece who who uh, takes care of, of my bear. Um, <laughs> and so they've been our food delivery. So it's nice I still very get nice. To, to see her. Very nice, very mm -hmm. good. So um, I, again, we when we had you on the show three years ago, uh, Devin, you were working for Apple Yes. at that time. Uh -huh. And that fizzled out. And so one day Devin called me up and said, you know what, I, I, I really want to see if maybe Andrea may have an opportunity because Devin comes from a fashion um, a fashion degree or fashion um, experience as well and your resume. And I said, why don't you just give her a call? Give her a call and say, hey, how you doing? And tell her that you may be interested in helping her brand, you know? So what happened with that, Devin? Actually, that's not the way it went. Oh, I thought it was. You did call me though. Uh -uh. You did call me. I didn't call you. Yes, you did because I gave you a number. No, you didn't. I emailed her. Like I got her emails. But why I did got you, her emails what? on? Um, I was subscribed to the so many. You did list. ask me though the an opinion. Mm -mm. Devin, <laughs> I uh -oh. swear to God, I did not. I it's okay. a I was out, All right. It's I was, a smack down. I was out walking my dog. Okay, my mother had just passed away. Uh huh. And I'm out walking my dog. It's August. I'm not have August. To delete this because I totally remember it differently. June. It's June. I think it was June because uh -huh. I went to Costa Rica in July and I went into, and I said to Danny, I said, I just got an email from Andrea. I think I'm going to, cause I started my own, like, why did you get an like, email from her? Media company. Like I was trying to do my own, you know, content company. Oh, okay. Remember I was doing photography, oh, videography right, 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 right. and all of that stuff. Cause I did your, your 50th video. Um, so I went in and I told Danny, I said, uh, I think my mom just came through me and I know it's crazy, but. I get this womanista emails from Andrea, so I think I'm going to email her and see if she needs any help, business side or film side. Okay, I so thought, I put I totally, together I an email. I differently, but okay. But you were the catalyst of us. <laughs> but you were the catalyst. us on the podcast. I thought you called me to take her number. And mm -mm. and Devin, okay. um, you know, was genuinely interested in the whole journey yes, of it when absolutely. we were on the podcast. Um, and timing wise, yes, your mother must have been going through because I literally <gasps> was just put an ad and I was trying to think of how, because I had a warehouse and I didn't really care to be working in the warehouse. Um, Where was the warehouse at? In Simi Valley. Mm. And it was a nice, new, beautiful place and everything. But I really loved working from home and I had all my stuff out there and I had a, a really big workspace. Uh, whereas at the warehouse, I had a desk, you know. So I was trying to figure out how I could have actually somebody in my home to work work because just people knowing where I lived and knowing I had a family I could you know there was a separate entrance if I had someone come in all that but 
But how am I going to have like a stranger and I have a daughter? You know, I don't mm. know. Like that just seems weird. And so it was like Devin was the perfect. Oh my God, I know him. The you know, universe works in in our favor when on the universe's time, not on our oh, time. Oh, big time. And what I loved. Devin is hyper organized and I'm hyper unorganized. Mm. And thank God. As if you couldn't tell, you're like, I sent you that email. I'm like, I can't find yeah, the email. Yeah, she texted me this morning and I'm like, I sent it to you on Tuesday. You responded to me as well. Yeah, I'm like, like, I'll I... resend it to her again. Yeah. Right. And Devin is constantly like, I'll find it for you. You know, I, oh, I, I heart things. I do this. I still can't. You heart things? I'm the worst, okay? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm the screenshot queen, too. I'm like, okay. Oh, no. And I try to put it in folders, and then I don't know where I put the folders. Oh, you shoot. Know, the worst. So Devin is hyper, hyper organized, which is amazing. That's great. But I do love that he <laughs> utilizes his right brain and his left brain. So, you know, in a day, we're designing something, and then we're sitting down, and we're putting a strategic plan together for an investor. You know what I mean? It's just like. <laughs> yeah, it's like. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. navigating back and forth between the two sides yeah. is scary sometimes, you know. So when you first started working together, uh -huh. what was it that you um, thought, okay, what, pen to paper, uh -huh. What when you were working with Andrea, what was it that, that you needed to help her progress in the first year of you guys working together? Well, that going back to the walk with the dogs and my mom coming through me that, that way, spiritually, um, it was like you, it was like this voice told me you can, you might be able to help her. Because I thought how we were smack dab in the middle of COVID, I think, at that time. Smack dab. And, and, and then I saw her emails because I'd subscribed to the emails. I was getting them from so many. So I was like, she must. She's gotten through the 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 big part of COVID <laughs> she's so still far. In business, yeah, so she's, she's doing still something in business. right. <laughs> and so and I had just started this own venture like for myself, for its own photography company, thinking like, okay, so I love fashion. Thinking back to the fashion. podcast that we did and i had my own little side you know hustle accessories company for a while and i thought well i've got both i can a business degree and i have a film degree and i know a lot about fashion so maybe i can help her in some way that's so that's where I was, I was coming from that angle okay so i didn't know what i mean i you didn't really know if i could do anything so when so. you contacted andrea were you like is this a blessing in disguise andrea this is like, you know let me he goes i don't know how we can work together, how I can help you or where I can fit in, but let's talk. It was perfect. And, you know, in any small business, not just this particular business, you have to wear a lot of hats. You do. You know, and nowadays they call it being a unicorn, right? Mm. That you can do this and that and not afraid of hard work. And, you know, Devin comes from a really good work ethic like myself and wears a lot of different hats. And it just, and it just... I could trust him, mm -hmm. you know, which was really oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and that's a and big so like. It, um, it works out really good, and you know, wonderful. I can be um, bitchy to him. He can be bitchy to me, and we still love each other at the end of the day. It's all good. Yeah, you know? it's a, it's a, and, and it, that's not very often that that no. happens. But I went through this phase like two weeks ago where I changed my med my doctor changed up my medication, <laughs> and like for two weeks I was really bitchy. Were you like, cranky? Ter terrible. Mm. It was so. I, and I, I was knew patient. it. I was patient. Did you notice a difference in yes. this attitude? Yes. Oh yeah. no, I, I, Devin! I, it was like this weird thing that I couldn't control. <gasps> what did Danny say? He was like, you "Get out!" No, <laughs> <laughs> you, need to, you need to get that under control. Oh, you did. Yeah, Ew. yeah. Do you it, think it made? Was it making you angry? Or just cranky? Or just off the cuff? Edgy? Um, impatient. Well, like, it was short and snippy. Yeah, like it I was, was just really bitchy. Yeah, mm. yeah, it was horrible. So I thought, okay, maybe there's something going on. Just yeah. let him write it out. And then he's like, God, am I being this way? I'm like, yes. Aww. You need to be able to You be recognized honest. it. I knew you it. Yeah, yeah, I totally knew it. You yeah, recognized like, it. But that yeah. shows you guys can obviously, you're friends, and, but business people at the same time. And you can say, you know, I'm so sorry. I, I was a bitch For yesterday. Sure. Blah, yeah, blah, we blah. have that. You need to Vice have versa. that. So you can't be yeah. like, oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's nothing. No. You can't That's do that. That's passive aggressive. Well, it's just, it's. It, it's, it doesn't do anyone any good. No, let's be honest. But so let's, like, okay, great. Let's work through this. And it brings you know, us closer. Well, yeah, you know, for sure. A lot of people do not have um, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, what we see on social media, people getting mad and cranky and, oh my goodness, you know, we'll talk about, you know, that whole pilot situation this week that was so cr crazy. But, um, you know, let, the emotional intelligence is lacking in this country. You know, look at the politics landscape that we're in as, as, as it is. And uh, so to, to speak to somebody on a level and say, hey, I'm sorry you're going through this. What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And you're not, you're not like, I'm your boss. I'm your coworker. Right. You know, that, and that's what brings a really good working morale to the yeah, whole situation. And, and the difference between like when I had Rock and Republic and when now, mm. you know, then it was a monster. It was yes. huge. I had hundreds of employees under the roof, you know, and I was always short and time, and, you know, mm. and, and 
I was like, not necessarily bitchy, but just like, hey, you've got five minutes. I literally had an egg timer on my desk. It's like, go, go, go. Wow. You know, we were doing shoes and denim and I was all, I was gone 200 days out of the year. It's like, my time was so small, you know? So um, now, and I also, my business partner, he and I didn't always agree on how to manage people, how to work with people, how to treat people. And I always wanted to be a kinder, gentler. And that's why my door, people would always come to me to complain about him. <laughs> yeah. but, Good um, cop, bad cop. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, the biggest thing I, I learned there too is that people want to be heard. They want to be respected. They want to that's matter. Very true. Very true. And feel appreciated. You know, I, and I really think I try to carry that into what we do now, mm -hmm. whether it's a photo shoot or a print or a, anything, just okay. a, a design direction, whatever. I may have my vision and it was like, okay. Let's try yours. Let's do mine. Let's, you know, well, I'm not always right, you know, and I think it's a, it's a great exercise to learn and maybe it's morphed and we come up with something organic together, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think it's, um, people like that and appreciate mm -hmm. that. And it gives you a sense of, of accomplishment too. Like, Hey, like Devin made this amazing print. It's like, Oh my God, he made this print. Cool. Now Swimanista has this cool exclusive print. Now Devin's proud of what he did. Now, you know, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a win-win all yeah. the way around. Are you in charge? Were you responsible for the pink? Um, what's the call? Not, not the gingham. The gingham, or no. did, 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 was that Just, you? Was that your design? That was more me. It was weird it's because gorgeous. it was blue. Now and, it's pink. And and it was uh, then in the eleventh hour. I don't even know why. I was like, let's do pink. Let's do pink. You knew well, the Barbie. Barbie was on the rise. Check yeah, out their guess, website. Check out their Instagram. Barbie. Right. It was yeah, before it was Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. It was gorgeous. You knew it. You design. were the zeitgeist that pulled the it down. The zeitgeist. Yeah. 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 Um, because we have to work on something, you know, a year before it comes out. So right. it just it just coincided. Well, I think it's a gorgeous design. Pink gingham collection. Can you say landed. like? Uh, can we say who? No, no can't do that. What? No. What? Right. No, I no, just okay. I I took inspiration from other things. Oh, okay. To create it. Okay. 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 I was like, Got oh, it. someone is surprising yeah. like that. Okay. No, so no, 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 let's no. talk about. I know we have a few minutes. I want to talk about the cancer schmancer mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, moment, a movement that you are co-sponsoring with Fran Drescher. Why are you doing this, and what has been your why? What's been your inspiration behind it? Well, okay. First of all, always a fan of Fran Drescher, and um, you know we have a connection where we've always kind of supported them on a smaller level with when they were doing um, gift bags or something. I always gave them a coupon. Are or, you a personal you know, friend of Fran? Drescher's? I'm not a personal friend of Fran's, not yet. Fran. Okay, Fran, are you listening? <laughs> yeah, girl. Okay. Yeah, but, um, I, I, I um, her Fran's right hand man was friends with my uh, my business part you know it's like a friend of a friend of a right. friend Osmosis. Kind of a thing, right so um we've never really done anything deep dive with them before and um this year as you know um i have a friend who's got cancer and i've spent really most of my year mm. in hawaii um with him and thank God I'm able to have Devin hold down the fort and being able to work remotely, been able to to be there for both. Uh, sending samples to Hawaii, doing virtual fittings. So <laughs> wow. And so yeah. I just thought, you know what? Let's partner with Fran for this. Now. That's Let's wonderful. really do it big. And she jumped on board and she's been a great partner. Her whole team has been amazing. And um, she even sent my daughter a book. And it's Aww. just, um, you know, what she's been doing for a long time. She's educating people. She's been through it. And it's a great, great cause and mm -hmm. great awareness. And I'm super proud. And Good. the thing is, too, I think what was my light bulb moment, we were watching um, television. And I like to watch something that my daughter can watch, something that's funny. And we turned on an old episode of The Nanny. And we were laughing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, we've got to do this collaboration. That's, again, the universe Laugh is always talking. Yes, exactly. Isn't that yeah. interesting? And that's is so the best interesting. Medicine, you know? Yeah. Very interesting. You going to say something? I have an idea since we're talking about it. What? And this show is going to air a little bit after you know, the cutoff date. So why don't we do this? So we're doing on our website, we're doing, you know, we're supporting the, the cancer schmancer. Mm -hmm. And so we're offering, I think it's what, 20 off site wide. And then we're okay. donating 15%. And then we're donating 15% oh. from all sales to it. So yes. let's extend it to your listeners. You know, okay. if you get this oh. message after, you know, after. Wonderful, Devin. Um, you know, roll it's it into over, November. We'll roll it right into November. Oh my goodness. And you, you know what? We'll post it on the, mm -hmm. on the April Podcast podcast website and the, the YouTube channel right. on the, yeah. and do, do some links. Look at this. Always And we working. might even be able to get Always you a working, book this man. from uh, um, Cancer Smancer. Uh, yeah. Honey, will it if be you buy? my friend? Of Come course. on, Fran. 
No, Vivian. It's not no. signed by Fran, no. but you know, oh, it's her. It's her book. Maybe it's my book. Maybe my copy will. Maybe be. your. Maybe <laughs> um, Shannon's will be. No, you know, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and you know what we need to do? Just ar- organically. Already this is organically. Okay, this, is all, this is all. It's like she's gonna be like, uh, you're, off the cuff. you're fired. <laughs> Where's the hook, Barrett? Get the hook. <laughs> Let's do like a little giveaway to your listeners. Like the, I don't know, you used to do back in the day, you would say, the ninth caller will get right. the free tickets. I know, right? Or whatever. Hello, ninth caller. How? You're on with a broadcast. Let's do a suit of your choice. To, let's do a giveaway for uh, your listeners. What would you like to have the giveaway? I don't know. Giveaway? What would you like to give okay, away? I'll tell you what, I still have the scarf that you gave me when, you, when I did the, um, when you guys were doing that. Um... The uh, oh, Kickstarter yes. campaign. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Okay. How about... If you go on to Swiminista, you like, mm-hmm. you share, okay, right, yeah, and then we do a um, uh, share it with at least. Three How about people. you comment? You comment and comment. You comment. Like, share, comment, comment. and then we um, we have an app, and it will just automatically draw, <gasps> and we'll do a Look drawing at that, you guys. for free swimwear. How, How about that? that? Sound? So like oh, yeah? us, like us, like comment and. Uh, like, comment, and share. And share. The Swimanista Instagram. We're talking the Swimanista Instagram um, yes. brand. And it's uh-huh. at Swimanista. Perfect. Swim, I N I S T A. Yes. Boom. We just literally just thought of this now. Look yes. at this. This yeah, is yeah, how yeah. great minds think. Like, <laughs> our time is already up. So we're going to go into the next segment. So, um, Andrea, please, you're welcome to stay. We're going to talk about more things that I definitely want to get your opinion on. But thank you so much for being here. Congratulations. Kudos. Thank you. On your, uh, your uh, on this amazing new company that you started and thank you for hiring my friend Deborah. yes thank you for hiring me yes it's that's like a love awesome. fest thank that's you wonderful. thank and you we'll, we'll clarify like maybe i did reach out to you get her number but that's how it came to me um it was um it was on me but was, i uh, i i'm sure i had me. your number because you're on the show and you're my friend already. i remember already. Devin begging me can you please help me with that andrew put kidding. in a good word do it totally kidding totally kidding what, how do i get to her past her people <laughs> I don't know. Can you help me here? You got past her. Past my people. Like a... <laughs> They're a tough crowd. They're tough. A- anyway, thank, thank you for having yes. me with your company in Queen Thank course. you for having me back on your show again. Absolutely. And thank you for being here, Miss Andre. And thank you, Barrett, in the background for being yes. here. Pleasure. Yes, yes. We will be right back. Okay, so we are back. And these. Uh, this is a really quick segment. It's going to be rapid fire questions I'm going to ask Andrea. These are the famous, some of them are the famous 73 questions that Vogue asks celebrities. So she's my, I'm sorry, but you're my celebrity. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. I didn't give you these questions to rehearse. No. So these are completely Im- impromptu. No. Yes. <laughs> All right. So ready. Let's go. Andrea, okay. what is your go-to breakfast? I don't eat breakfast. Coffee, black coffee. What is the first thing you thought about this morning? Oh, God. Um, Getting my daughter up to make sure she was here today with me. Okay. (laughs) Who were your celebrity crushes growing up? Mark Spitz, the Olympic swimmer. swimmer. Oh, that's right. Okay. Night in, night out. In. Okay. What's a trend you'll never give up? Uh, Aviator glasses and my hoop earrings. (laughs) (laughs) What's a trend you'll never give into? Ooh, uh, those little mini shirts. Mm, okay. Half shirt deal. Okay. And then what is your favorite movie? Oh, my God. Okay, I've got three. Do it. I'm sure different genres. Okay, uh, Devil Wears Prada. Watched that twice last week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Crazy Rich Asians. I gotta watch that. Oh, oh so my bad. God. I've seen that a hundred times. Why do you like that one? It's just, it just is fun. It takes you through the whole thing. It's got great quotes that you can pull from it. You I gotta know? watch that movie. It, what is it, it, Rebecca? I'm not an animal, Rebecca. Is it Rebecca? Rachel? Rachel. Rachel, I'm not, I'm not an animal. I'm not an yeah. animal, Rachel. <laughs> I gotta watch it. I gotta, my brother even liked that movie. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> he read all the books too, my brother. Oh, Theron, Theron read all the books. Oh, I oh, get it, Theron. Good for him. And then what was your other third movie? It's kind of off, um, but it, as good as it gets. With uh, Jack Nicholson? Yes. And Diane Keaton? Dying, no, no. No. Oh. Um, What's her name? Helen Hunt. Helen, Helen Hunt. Hunt. That's she right. She won the Academy Award for that yeah. movie. Yeah, that's right. And why is that your favorite movie? Just when he, when Jack Nicholson goes into the the waiting room of his psychiatrist, he's like, "People, is this as good as it gets?" It's like it mm. just makes you think, like, "Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is." Yeah. You know, and like it, through life, like, is mm-hmm. this as good as it gets? It just like reflective moments. Mm-hmm. I'll think about that 
as time mm. in different situations in my life. I gotta revisit that movie. And, and I liked right. how the people, they came together, they were unlikely, and they found love and found something with each other that they all could connect with. Okay. I liked that. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, that's rapid fire, 73 questions, Vogue. <laughs> Don't sue me, I'm taking that, I'm taking that concept. <laughs> we will be right back. On this show, Andrea, as you know, I love to talk about travel. And you, you, I asked you, what did you want to talk about in the podcast? And you said travel tips. I'm like, right on. Uh, right up your alley. Right because up my alley. For those of you who know this woman, I love your zest for life and your zeal for travel. Thank you. That is just the, one of the most amazing things. Like you wait for nobody. You're like, I want to go to Egypt. 100%. I want to go here. I want to go here. And just like that famous quote from, uh, um, uh, my God, what's the favorite movie, Bear? The, my other favorite movie, Annie Mame. Uh, mm. You know. I mean, you have to live, live, time. live. Most poor suckers are starving to death. Life is a banquet. Mm -hmm. Hello. You know, Absolutely. and you live, live, live. And I love 100%. that. And I live, live, live. And so I, I share that. That. Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, travel tips. I mean, there, I, I can. I can. I, I, someone actually told me I should write a, some sort of an online booklet about travel tips. You should. Because <laughs> I am a single traveler, but I'm also traveling with my friends. So I love to travel by myself, but I love to travel with groups. It just, it's, it's a... Um, hybrid. It's a hybrid of things I like to do because there's times where I want Shannon time. I want to be left alone. I want to have a spa day. I want to have a either hiking day, walking day, a shopping day. And I don't want to worry about what John and Susan and Mike want to do. Uh -huh. You know, but then I do want to hang out with John and Susan and Mike on another day. So that's why I just like doing different things. So, um, <laughs> you know, a travel tip for you guys, if you are a solo traveler, is it, this, the world is not that scary. It really is not. You just have to make smart decisions. You know, don't go into a back alley somewhere. And and if someone's trying to sell you a purse or a watch, don't do it. <laughs> let's, you know, let's, let's use something called common sense, especially if you are a single woman traveling in places. You know, you know, unfortunately, we are in a, in a situation with the Israeli and the Palestinian conflict right now where travel is being affected. My friends, um, I won't name their names. They're actually going on a cruise next month. And they, I guess their itinerary was kind of around that area, I'm assuming. And because it's around that area, the cruise line kind of screwed them with their itinerary. And they're going to be, they, they, my friends, they love to do major cruising. So they're out, they're on a boat for 30 days. Wow. On a 40 day, 30 day cruise. No, not every day on the boat, but they must destination. be gay if they're cruising. Yeah, they know. are. They are. <laughs> Whole different kind they of cruising. They do very well for themselves. They're entrepreneurs as well. And you guys know who I'm talking about. Hi, I'm glad you're listening. Um, <laughs> they're very good friends of mine. Okay. And um, so they actually had a debacle with the cruise line. And I guess the, the cruise line screwed them with their refund or credit. They always do. So, yeah, apparently. And this is a very famous, well-respected cruise line. And I'm not going to say their name, but it, remind, it, it rhymes uh, with ACL. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. But... Um, so they just found out they have to be 10 days at sea. Oof. 10 days? 10 days. Well, hopefully they're calm days. That is a lot. That uh, is a lot. And I'm like, okay, I said double up on your buffets, double up on the gym, double up on yeah. every show, mm -hmm. double up on every meal. <sighs> because how I would go freaking cabin crazy if I'm Me on a boat too. for 10 days yeah. and I'm not making any port stops. Yeah, that's yeah. that's rough. That's rough. So their whole cruise is like 40 days. Okay. I don't. I would never do a cruise, but they, they, they like to do different you know destinations. Cruises like aren't for everyone. Cruises are definitely not for everybody. I think my max cruise I can only do is seven days. Seven days, yeah. Is the max seven. for me. I did the Galapagos, but it was on a cruise ship that with 12 people. It was okay. a private. Oh, and, that so it was a, it was a chartered. Yeah, I think for for traveling, you should write a book. <laughs> you should write just something my, my, for my or, own travels or a yeah. blog, something because people don't understand um, what it's like to travel alone, what it's like to mm -hmm. travel with people in a group, other countries, the little things that you have to take into account. That I used to have a newsletter that was associated with the uh, Abroad Productions, and I need to get back on it. The I have an issue. Well, that's a whole different. Another whole another show people I have issues with writing i really do I, 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 I don't know if i have adhd and so what i do on my trips is i do write uh -huh. i do journal and okay. what i need to start doing is take those journal anyways you can turn those journals and over to um a ghost writer i sure can oh we're talking about ghost writing in a minute mm -hmm. okay. yeah with Brittany. okay um but um passport and visa rules you guys went to columbia did you have to have a, a, a visa for columbia no. so no no so, we did not you know that they're changing now for europe they mm -hmm. are you have, you have to have, to have a visa for every country in Europe starting How? in January, which starting is such a drag because of yeah. those of you who travel in Europe. A lot of times you're in Europe and people, are like, hey, let's go to Paris. Yeah, let's so close. jump over here to you know here or there. And now 
You can't do that. What do you think is the waiting period to get it? Well, even, I mean, it just takes away all the spontaneity. It sure does. Spontaneity. Yes. Um, I don't, I think it's only a week, but when you're doing something like that, when you're in London, you want to go to Paris for the night. 100%. You can't do that. No. That's terrible. I, I wonder if there's like, when do they have a, a pass, a visa pass? Only if you're o- over 65 or 70, ah, really? I think. Then do you know when this is going to be effective? Next year. Uh. In January, January? Or I don't know. Somewhere? I think 2024 sometime. Oh, that's going to suck. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a bummer. I didn't know about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's going to suck. But always be confident when you're traveling. 100%. Always act like you know where you're going. Even if you 100%. have to put an earbud in, earbud in your ear and you've got the map where you're walking so you're not standing there totally vulnerable. Right. Hide your money. Don't wear a lot of jewelry. Those what, are kind of basics, not, you know. Why even bring? This is one thing about I hear people on the news getting um, uh, jacked on their travel. Why are you bringing your jewelry? Why? I yeah. know. Why? What is the purpose of bringing your jewelry on your travel? Leave that <laughs> yeah. shit at home. It's safe yeah. and you're safe. Lock it up. Lock it up. You don't. Mm-hmm. There's no need to bring your sixty thousand Cartier no. watch no. on a trip when you're going to Mexico. Wait, no. like what are you doing? Yeah, no. um, I agree. You're just you setting know, yourself up. You're just setting yourself up. And one thing I definitely want to advise <clears throat> is travel insurance for sure. I was I was hurt back in in Portugal when I, I hurt my knee. I thought I had a blood clot. It was a very scary situation. I had to be, go to the hospital. I had to get shots. I had to get uh, uh, checked out. And travel insurance took away that extra cost. And remember, we're in Europe, we're in Portugal, so they do have socialized medicine. I didn't technically have to pay anything, but when I had to do x-rays and extra exams, then I had to pay about 270 euros. Oh. But can you imagine what that would be here in the United States That's with like, no, no insurance? Oh, my God, no. You, Thousands you, of dollars. Yeah, that would be a whole other trip that yes. you couldn't go yeah, on. Exactly. And another thing about having travel insurance, you guys, is that because I had travel insurance, I was at a private hospital instead of a public. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So I, my waiting time in the waiting room was an hour versus six hours right. in a public hospital. Yes. You yeah. know what else is good, too, is the uh, American Express Platinum card. Yes. Because they, if you have a trouble, you need a hospital or anything, you can call them and they can direct you to yeah. really good pl- Absolutely. places as well. So, um, and then because I do, because my insurance, I have an insurance company, I do sell yeah. travel insurance. <laughs> so I definitely, it's not just for my benefit, but it, I see so many people buying it and it's helped. And they've, I've heard horror stories on people's trips that they got sick or hurt. They were so grateful that they have travel insurance. So that is definitely a tip. We'll talk about more tips in the, in, on future Wait, just shows. Just one really fast one. You guys always take a business card of your hotel because you get really that all part. excited. You jump in that your part. hotel and then you're like, oh my God, I'm at the Hyatt. There, there's 20 Hyatt's. <laughs> there's 20 Wait, where, Hyatts. where are you going? You know. <laughs> so that is, uh, I did get lost Absolutely. once in Germany. So yeah. uh, I learned. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. What are you Ms. looking Andrea, at? Mr. Devin. Mm-hmm. Guess who's awarded Guinness Book of World Records this week? Um, did we get think. an award that we didn't I know, know about? Um, you? <laughs> I mean, me? You? Did they, I wish. Did, did I miss the call? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. Deservedly so, Madonna, queen of pop. Always queen of pop. And what did she win this for? So basically, the Guinness World Book of Records recognized that she is the leading top female, only top female artist to sell over 400 million copies of her albums. Um, this is an equivalence to the Beatles to Elvis and to Michael Jackson. Um, so say what you will about Madonna. I don't care all the haters out there, all the, the people who don't know who she really is and what she has brought to the music industry. She has shaped and molded it. And um, I sent it to Deb and I said, look look, 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 look what our queen is doing. Look what she's done. Look what she's done. Do you remember when she was on Dick Clark? Yes. Yes. And he said, what are you going to do? She's like, I'm going to rule the world. You yeah. know, and, and she was just like... this little... Yeah. First album. Yeah. Kind of, and then look at she look, really she did. did. She has she ruled did. the world. Mm-hmm. So yeah. she's speaking of ruling world. She is on a rural tour, her 40th <clears throat> celebration tour. And so we've seen some excerpts on her tour. Who's been performing? And the funny thing when you were talking about what was on the, uh, what was she uh, bringing on the stage in London? Uh-huh. The famous drag queen was Bob. Yeah, drag queen. it was. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yes! and you know, did you notice that they? Because I talked about moments uh, in cultural his- history for her, mm-hmm. like the Antoinette moment on, yes. on on MTV. He was actually wearing that gown. They so was, it, yeah. yeah. But he was also wearing <laughs> um, um, another outfit. It was very, it was a suit and a, and like a top hat. I forget uh-huh. what, uh, what that was re- representing. But did you see that the, it was a round stage that also re- rotates, and it was all of her outfits. Uh-huh. And it was, and you know, it was all LGBT rep- LGBT. LGBTQ representing on the stage um, from her all of her errors, her fashion errors. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Did she have topless dancers? Like Did with you boobs notice that? or men? 
Like boob boobs. Yeah, boob boobs. Well, I wouldn't be surprised that she had that on her. Um, she had that on what the tour? Not the Rebel tour. Not the. Was it the sex tour? It was on. It was yeah. She had, she had free boobs showing on the tour. Um, and that thing was it the candy one or was it that one? Oh, um, I, 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 I've been to five yes. of her concerts and wow. I've seen boobs all of her shows. So yeah, it's like I, I guess the first time I really <laughs> noticed them, like because it was social media on social media, I was like we were watching I a bunch of this of excerpts from the London show, and we were like, oh. Is that? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I did. I'm pretty either. sure it was, but it, it, not either. surprising, right? You know, so anyway, she was also too like the first one to kind of bring reality TV mm -hmm. with her yeah. uh, with the truth or dare. Truth or dare. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were so many groundbreaking things. Absolutely, that people don't give She's her credit iconic. for. You know, love her, hate her, hate this moment, love that moment. The cool thing about Madonna, if you hate this moment, give it a minute, and she'll be back with a different 100%. vibe. Right. <laughs> exactly. just, to change it up. She, yeah, because she gives no f's. She yeah, she literally gives no f's. Um, on this concert, I did notice that a lot of the excerpts and a lot of the videos are of her sitting down uh -huh. because she does. She is still nursing a, yeah, a she leg has injury. That knee mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, on. she really jacked up her knee. Mm -hmm. So she's not. She's not doing a lot of dancing, but she's got the dancers performing. She's right. doing a lot of singing. She's got all four of her children doing the runway look. Doing, yeah, that is so amazing. You know, doing doing some dancing, which yeah. is absolutely wonderful. It's a family affair, which is great. And she's actually singing live, and she sounds phenomenal. Yeah, actually. she sounds phenomenal. Her voice and she really has good. her old school Madonna mm -hmm. look. She's got the old school flair, the hair. Yeah, I love she's, either, she's also sporting a long wig, long yeah. straight wig. She looks like Madonna. Can we talk about the fashion since we yes, got a fashion please icon do. right here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we were looking at it in the office the other day. Yeah. There's a Versace. She has on this Versace bodysuit. It's it all is like mirrored. Amazing. <sighs> it's like she's a disco ball. Mm. Yeah. And, it's yeah, insanity. It's, I can't wait to see and the looks person. Amazing they brought back well. a, the new version of the uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier um, cone, yes. cone bra. Yeah, the boob thing. Yeah, okay. so, I mean, brought back some legacy looks for the show, but also there's new designers that are working Fantastic. on stuff that I'd actually never heard I of. I love that. But, yeah, I can't I wait that. to see it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? That's, we're going to try to make Madonna a minute, a Madonna a minute, so... We are going to close this segment, but Madonna, we love you. Congratulations. Bye, Madonna. Bye. Yeah. Oh, you're, we hope you're listening, girl. We would love you over at our, at our studio trust. Could For you sure. imagine if we had Madonna in the yeah, studio? Yeah, it would be amazing. She, the, the entourage alone would just probably be about 100 people. Probably. And security. But mm -hmm. Madonna, you're security. very welcome. You're very welcome to be on a broadcast <laughs> podcast. We're going to put that in the, in the universe. We'll be right back. All right, so since we do talk about culture, I'm going to let, let uh, Devin lead this conversation. You read something really interesting about fashion icon another fashion icon that we love vera wang vera wang what's the deal with vera wang this week well first of all who knew that she was 74 years old i mean had no idea yes. not that that's old you no know, they, but like, she doesn't look you know, 74 74 no. years old she does not look you know 74 years old and that's i guess now out in the world so people have asked her reporters are asked her what's your secret what's your secret <laughs> and she's like um donuts mcdonald's and vodka does okay. she say she do a shot of vodka every day? Is that what she says? I don't remember what the the article specifically said. What triggered it was I was up having my coffee in the morning, my donuts and vodka yeah. in the morning, <laughs> and, so, and a Big Mac, uh, <laughs> and a Big Mac with on the side. So I, you know, it was a local news segment. Dana Devon, if I could plug Dana Devon's segment on KTLA, they were doing this special, and I was like, I got to look this up. Okay, and it said specifically she has like intermitting McDonald's. Like she'll eat it for two weeks and then. She doesn't you know, not it. not okay. have it. So, is there something to be said about the uh, the grease and the McDonald's Ugh, fries? I don't like McDonald's. It's you know what? She's food. ruining it's health food, food for the whole next generation. Donuts. First of all, yeah. she's tiny. Okay. She first tiny. of all, do not let Barrett hear that. That's a, <laughs> you can say a bad word. Better. I would rather you say a bad word than tell my daughter she can eat McDonald's donuts and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Vera Wang does it. Uh, right. <laughs> Can't so we Vera go to Wang, McDonald's? That's the, that's the secret, uh, allegedly, to her, her, her youthful glow. Well, maybe it has so many preservatives, it's like preserving her. Uh, maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> I just know my stomach would turn. Oh, I could I, not I could handle not, uh, I could not handle first that. First of all, I love McDonald's. Do you really? Oh, of course you do. Oh, the we worst talked about this yesterday. Yes. Who this man eats? I ate like a oh. third grader. Do you really, basically. Devin? Yeah. Shame I, on you. I cook really well. I, cook, I love to cook, but like, I will buy the most insane you guys, will I definitely found in the refrigerator <laughs> a in this in in plastic this thing with a it was a 
jelly and, and peanut butter sandwich with a crust cut off in a circle. Yes, they're delicious. It they're by like Smuckers. You get at a... Oh, they're Crustables? Yes. They're called Crustables. Okay. Crustables. I was like, who? Like, I'm going to throw this did out. Did you eat it? I did. It was his. So did you like it? They're delicious. You know have you, you not make had them? one? I, I see them in the store, but I see on TikTok how you can make your own Crustable oh. sandwiches, which is more organic. They look like easy to make. Yeah, who's you, got time you just, to do that? So you, <laughs> do you eat them frozen or fresh? No, you let them sit out for like 30 minutes and okay. then you eat them. You, okay. they're, they stay frozen. Okay. And then you Yeah, I don't know anything out. about that life. And then they yeah, taste like fresh baked bread. Oh, no like, thanks. It's it, delicious. To me, no. it looks like a chemical sandwich. It, I am sure it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure sorry. Did you did I did I tell you my for some chemicals, doll. Did I tell you my real age? What's You're, your real I'm age? I'm actually 75. Oh, right. oh stop it. It's the snackables. It's the snackables <laughs> that's keeping you <laughs> keeping you preserved. <laughs> <laughs> we will be back. Thanks, Devin. Thank you. I am so excited to talk about this segment. You guys see these these tabs and these notes. I highlighted some information. The book. The, the book. book. The book the of book the of the book. of the month. Everybody's talking about is Britney Spears' new memoir, The Woman in Me. And I have been doing excerpts on Facebook and Instagram. People are loving it. I'm doing it on TikTok. They're like soaking in what Britney has to say. And I got this on October 24th when it came out. It was on my porch, and I was like, immediately started reading it. So, did you guys, have you guys been reading this, Devin? I have been reading <gasps> it. I've been, okay, truth be said, transparency. I've yes. been listening, okay? You've but been I listening? Did, oh, you got I, did, I did buy the, the, the hard copy, okay. and it's delayed. It was supposed to be here yesterday, and it's delayed. Come on. I mean, I Brittany, know. come on. Oh, yeah. I love her. Just fantastic. Just, you know. She is the she is she she was the queen of print she was the pop of princess Madonna's pop of, of the queen of pop queen of pop but Britney is the the, the pop queen princess. of uh, the princess pop pop yeah <clears throat> princess pop whatever you want to call it so um basically the story this the whole book is w her side of the story her side of what was going on the last literally the last twenty five years of her existing how she started whole family and there's some really sad sad points in her life you know she was their, their family was poor her dad was a raging or maybe even still is a raging alcoholic her mom had a very bad temper and they were very broke did you know so in the in a few pages again on the first eight pages i'm already like this like engrossed into it her she's actually um britney's mom's side of the family they're british and maltese i didn't know that yep. had no idea mm, i didn't either had no idea huh. her their um their, her grandmother came from <clears> london <throat> And uh, um, she had a strong British accent. Her grandmother married a Maltese man, Malta man. And so- I you meant one of the dogs, Maltese man. <laughs> 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 and they, that side of the family had a little bit of money. Uh -huh. On Brittany's dad's side was dad, the grandfather was very abusive. He was a police officer in Louisiana, very hard on her dad, abusive, so abusive um, that her grandfather had 10 children, three wives. Oh my God. Two of the wives were sent to the mental hospital mm -hmm. because they, they, hold them. And then the first wife, which was Jean, she actually shot herself yeah. and killed oh, herself horrible. on her, oh, on her that, son's grave. And that horrible, oh my God. How tragic is Ugh. that? Tragic. Ugh. So Brittany never met her grandmother. Um, and apparently, you know, the, the grandfather's name is June. June. So Southern. A June, man named Jean, June. Jean is the, the Jean wife. Jean is the wife, and then and June, June was the husband. husband. Yeah. And June wasn't, he was a piece of work. He did piece not, of he, work. Was, he was a piece of work. Yeah. And uh, she said in her excerpt that he, as he got older, he got patient and quieter and more forgiving because he knew what he did. He right. ruined people's lives. It was horrible. And yeah. he ruined his son's life. And that's the reason why, you know, it says a lot about Brittany's father and how he's so controlling to the day of the conservatorship. So, what I wanted, what I wanted to do is just, you know, read a couple of excerpts that I thought was 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 worthy, because, um, it, you know, Britney Spears is human. She's a human girl. She she has feelings. She came from very uh, low means. The, their parents were broke. Her dad was so broke that he owed so many so much money. But he started his own business. He was actually started a construction company. He started a gym in Kentwood. It's a very small town. It was two thousand people at the time. And then he had a name for himself. He started making money, but because of his alcoholism and his drinking, he lost everything. Mm. He lost everything. And then that's was. but they always knew that her daughter, that Brittany was very talented. And so they got her into all these editions and the Mickey Mouse Club, the first time didn't work, but they sent her to New York and she was working on some sort of Broadway show and she got a name for there. She didn't like it though. 
she didn't like working on Broadway. She said she it was a, so much work. She was an understudy. She was too. an she understudy. Was like, she wasn't. She wasn't even a top. Wow. Right. Yeah. She was. A, but she was actually a second understudy next to Natalie Portman. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That yes. of actress. Wow. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Both backup actors mm-hmm. for this. It's mm-hmm. called the show was called Reckless. The Reckless. Okay. So she didn't like it. So on Christmas they went back home and then she started. They, you know, mom said let's let's go back to taking song, singing lessons, dance lessons, whatever. And then she had an opportunity to meet some of the big wigs back in New York. And it was the famous Max Martin, who was her producer on top of Clive. What was it, Clive? Um, I didn't recognize Clive, that. I, it. It wasn't Clive Davis. But it was Clive Cl- Davis. It was Clive. Clive. Another British, British guy. It was another British uh, mm-hmm. guy. Clive. Oh, I didn't Shannon, recognize my the name? name. Yeah. I didn't recognize him either, but mm. apparently... And it, there's a very famous um, uh, uh, Clive Calder. Calder, that's Calder. it. Calder. Mm-hmm. And he was able to introduce her to all the big wigs in New York and all the executives. So um, she had a, uh, a really interesting way of, of, of expressing herself because it showed that, you know, even though she was getting to the point of recognition, she started taking Prozac because of the anxiety that she was dealing with. And then here comes nineteen eighty here comes nineteen eighty nine. Ninety eight. Ninety eight and, mm-hmm. and the, 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 the 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 song mm-hmm. uh baby. Hit me one Oops, more I time. Did it again. Is it hit me no, baby? Yeah, baby hit, hit me. me one more time and then Oops hit. I Did It Again was after that. Yeah. And that hit ten million copies mm-hmm. sold. The album was Oops I Did It Again, yeah. right? Yeah. The first hit was yeah. Hit Me Baby One she, More Time. She uh toured in all the malls. She had a mall tour. Oh my god. Just so people could see what she yeah. looks like in her in her skills. And then the, the the song came out in 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 October. And that's when her no life was. No more malls changed. after that. No, no more malls no after more that. Malls. <laughs> no. no. No more malls after that. Um she loved meeting Madonna. Did yeah. you see that excerpt? I want to read this excerpt. She said, I started running into Madonna. Could you imagine? Hey, Devin, I just ran into Madonna the other day. I just started day. running into right. her. I just started running mm-hmm. into Madonna the other yeah. day. Again. Yeah, again. <laughs> My goodness. She said, I would do sh- shows in Germany and Italy, and we would end up performing at the same European uh, award shows. We'd greet each other as friends. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Same with Mariah. Same like, with she, Mariah Carey. Did you see, read the, the, the quote about the well, light? It's like once you're yeah. in this, like, um, this, this Fame kind of bubble, upper... Right? Mm-hmm. echelon of mm-hmm. group you just mm-hmm. instantly have this kinship because you know you've had to sacrifice pretty much your life to yeah. be this person absolutely mm-hmm. and then she was talking about yeah the ring light because Mar- mariah carey always had a ring light no before, matter what she had before, before we even. know what ring lights really were uh-huh. we can go get a ring light at target right now for 10.99 but she said uh she opened it up and poured and, and poured her she said, poured the most beautiful otherly, otherworldly light. You know how we have ring lights now. Well, more than 20 years ago, Mariah Carey knew about ring lights. And no, I can't say her first name. To me, she's always going to be Mariah Carey. Yeah. yeah not, just her, not just Mariah, it's Mariah Carey. It's Mariah Carey. As she should. You know, yeah. respect Miss Mariah Carey. So I'm just on, um, on now currently chapter 14. And you're on chapter 13, 13 right now? yeah. And so we're now into the point where Justin Timberlake, you know, Justin Timberlake, I loved you so much. I know. I loved mm. him. I even forgave him I with Janet knew. Jackson. I, what'd you say on the last show? We always knew. We, you, what was but after Janet used? Jackson, I lost faith. The whole yeah. in Nipplegate, you yeah. know, I, I yeah. lost I lost faith into Justin Timberlake. I loved him so much, Je- Devin. You said, we've been new. We've, we've been, been new. new. Now we've been new. And now <laughs> this is cemented. Justin Timberlake, why did you do that to her? You do not break up with people over the phone in a text. Mm-hmm. You don't do that. You, especially along you guys. They had a dating. house together. They had a house together in Florida in Orlando, mm-hmm. and um, I know we got to wrap this up. But, Look at you know, what's his name with Katy Perry asked for a divorce over text. Come oh, on. the worst people. Are Justin's the not worst. the They're first; awful. won't That's be the not, last. Yeah. It's just so it's so again the word passive aggressive. Well, it's chicken. It is chicken. You know, if you want to break up with somebody, do it in their face and say, I'm over you. Let's break up. I know it's They sucks. have enough money to fly somewhere, even if you're not in the same country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. she when she she also had the abortion. She had took the abortion bill. Very painful. She said it was the worst excruciating pain she's ever taken because they didn't want to go to the hospital. They didn't want to go to emergency room because right. they were afraid of the, of, of the press. press. And so she did a lot to make him comfortable. But what did Justin do to make her comfortable? Zero. Zero. She did a lot. She was in love with this man. Loved him. In love with Justin Timberlake. Yeah. So I'm very disappointed in you, Justin. You and I need to talk. Okay. <laughs> 
Snap. We need to talk. So mm-hmm. I we're gonna go and finish the rest of this book. So I will give you a part two on my synopsis of Britney Spears, The Woman in Me. But please go get it. It is actually a very I haven't read a memoir in years. I haven't either. So I'm gonna have more notes and more synopsis about Britney Spears and you know, and people are like, Why do you like Britney Spears? I mean, because she was part of our generation. Mm-hmm. She even though she's ten years younger than me, mm-hmm. she's what, forty one, mm-hmm. forty years old. She was the princess of pop. She was the new Madonna. So we loved her music. We saw this little white girl in ponytails dancing around seductively. We're like, who is this? Because we didn't mm-hmm. see and that. We went through the we journey like of this. her melting down, and it was very sad. And of our generation, we never really saw that. Like Madonna, that didn't happen to yeah. her, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. to see that happen and to her, and then quite publicly, yeah, yeah. really, really mm-hmm. publicly, yeah. is, is was heart wrenching. You yeah. know, we all felt really for was. her, and then to see her get a family, and then have uh-huh. all these things fall apart for her is Absolutely. it's really sad it is very sad it is very sad and i i hope she's healing now she's over the conservatorship yeah obviously she's just, she does really interesting things on instagram you know she got and she got a lot of backlash with her dance with the, the knives. knives a couple weeks ago okay so i'm just gonna i'm gonna put another public assur- uh, service announcement out yes right now go ahead brand. don't play with knives <laughs> don't play with knives <laughs> don't play with knives no exactly she, like she's you know she has her youtube i'm not youtube but her ig where she's always dancing in a bikini well right. we have bikinis yeah, hello were you dancing <gasps> in our bikini oh, happy to get Brittany. you we Brittany. got you Brittany Brittany stuff. hook you we up got you. with any sort of bikini one piece Looks like a bodysuit, two piece. She's got a, yeah. She loves her two pieces, and she yeah. loves the really low yeah, cut down. And we've got ones. it. We've it's got called you. the fearless or yes. the. Oh my what God. are we gonna do? What do yes. we put her in? We'll we'll put you in something. Yeah. Brittany, we'll hook you attention. up. Yes, and then be on my show. <laughs> in your I'm, bikini. And I'm, a, <laughs> that'd be amazing. I'm a southerner. That'd be amazing. I'm a neighbor of Louisiana. I grew up in Texas. I'm a so. fan. Actually, when you were in the back seat of your car and uh the paparazzi was getting all over you with the when I think your head was shaved and you you took a pair of jeans and you, you tried to cover yourself up. They were rocking Republic jeans. Were they really? See. Do you guys hear this scoop over here? There you go. They were rocking Republic jeans. Yeah. Full and, service moment. And it was like, it was great press for us. And it was so sad because I felt Aww. so bad for her. And she was like, like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. And it was like the full rocking Republic, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go, honey. We got there some we go. tea there. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. So we are back. And we are actually in conclusion of this amazing um, episode. And I just want to say thank you again, Miss Andrea. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you've been supportive of the show. Thank you. It's You're a real inspiration to me. I'm so happy people. to see you. Mm, thank you. Thank you. You look amazing. And thank you for bringing your wonderful, beautiful daughter. You guys had to meet. It was yes. way too long. We're going to do a little behind the scenes. And do you, do you mind us taking a picture together and put it on the, on the, no. on the socials? No. Well, you have to ask her. Okay. Barrett, is that okay? <laughs> yes. I've been always wanting to meet Miss Barrett. So thank you, Miss Barrett, for being here. We really appreciate it. You guys have a lovely mother and daughter relationship. Thank That's you. very admirable. At, um, are we running long, or can we? Can we? We're not running long. We okay, can edit. Can we, we talk. Can some okay, what, can what, we talk? What? Can we talk Tell, about this talk. kid that I love so much? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so at our offices, we might have a little pest running around, like uh-huh. a knight that comes around, <laughs> a little mouse, whiskers, mouse, and a real mouse, a real mouse, yeah. or two, Ooh, or in the calabasas and... office. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. you know it's wilderness. <laughs> so, oh no. So I'm. I tell Andrea, I'm like, you cannot. You're not going to kill that mouse, are you? You have to like catch it and release it. That's well, how we put some po- peanut butter. If you'd peanut butter, they like that. I got them. little traps and I got some peanut butter. Okay. Okay. So cue the part where Barrett kind of stalks her, her mom mm-hmm. over her in her house. But wait, post-its. even before that, even before that, I get a note on my desk. Oh. Hi. I'm a mouse. This is my house. Please don't kill Uh-oh. me. Oh, yes. yeah. And then yes. she signs it, the mouse, with a little fake yes. print. Uh huh. So that was the first a little thing. A mouse print. Yeah. A mouse print. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, that's cute, bear. You know, so yeah. cute. Then and I then, go home. Then she goes home, and there's a was there a rat like tied around well, she has or a these mouse little, tied around um, the doorknob or something. They're these little Scandinavian mice. If you've ever seen them, they have like little backpacks, or they're you know they come in a cigar box. They're these cute little. Okay. Stuffed, I've never seen it. They're but... these stuffed mice. They're okay. adorable. And it was hanging on the doorknob, right? Yeah, it was hanging and on the doorknob. And it says, don't kill me. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And there yeah. was a third one, I feel. Oh, no, more. So oh, then I more. go to get coffee the next morning. I open it up. It says, no trap kills work. Oh, work. right. Yeah. It's sitting it's in my covered. coffee cup. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so then I go to brush my teeth, and there's another mouse sitting next to my toothbrush oh, my with goodness. another little note. I was like, oh, God. So then she said, I'll pay for the no-kill traps 
myself. Oh. oh my gosh. And did we Barrett. catch the mouse? Well, I don't know. I just Wait. got the traps yesterday. Oh, right. you just got it. Oh, so this Message is a recent received, situation. Barrett. Yeah, this okay. is hot off Mer- the This is a recent received. situation. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? We need Barrett's updates. <laughs> what happened to the mouse on Monday with the no kill traps? Mouse gate. You're doing yeah, it very gate. you're doing it very nicely and humanely, yes. so good for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's not stuck in glue or Oh like God, that. no, I know. And, and, okay. and listen, I get no joy out of this, but no. I, it's unsanitary and to have mice and yeah. There's the little it poops, is unsanitary. you know, yeah. and and yeah, there's gross. the hunt of virus, other things too. Oh, so. oh okay. Yeah. No, no but, more you viruses. Know, we'll say goodbye <laughs> nicely to Mr. Mouse and Mr. Yes. Rat. But um, thank you again for being here. Thank you, Devin, for being thank here you as for well. Me. I appreciate it. And I'm loving this full circle moment that we're me having. Too. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, it's been three years. I haven't. I, I've seen you what a, a year ago when we had dinner or, or drinks before. You know, at, at, at Italy. At, at the yeah, that's right, at Italy. But um, we appreciate your time. Because we are all busy, but, and we're here on a Saturday recording. So again, we're taking our own personal time to do this. So I, I'm very grateful to you both, and uh, and Simeon, of course, uh, our background, our our, vit- our videographer back there. So, <laughs> if you guys want more information about Abroad Productions and Abroad Podcast, please follow us on Instagram. We're on TikTok, and we're also on YouTube. So you can watch all of our shows on YouTube, Abroad Productions. And I appreciate you guys being here. I'm Queen Shan Shan, and thank you for listening to Abroad. Abroad.